Now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon, and for that I'm joined on the line by Dr. Young Jun Sok, Professor of Economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Professor, thank you for coming on. Happy to be here. Well, stocks on Wall Street closed higher overnight on anticipation for a stimulus deal. Korean stocks following suit today. What's the story in the global markets? Okay, well, as you mentioned, the U.S. market uh, did go up. Dow went up by more than 100 points. Uh, it went up by 0.40%. S&P and NASDAQ rose by roughly similar amount. S&P by 0.47% and NASDAQ by 0.33%. But if you look at the daily movement, uh, movement from morning to uh, the closing, uh, then it actually went up a lot more during the late morning and early afternoon before falling. And that's because toward the end of the day, uh, the U.S. stimulus negotiations hit a snag. Uh, the, there are reports that the Republican Senate has warned uh, President Trump's White House that the Senate will not accept spending a uh, bill above one trillion dollars. Now, the uh, Senate Republicans seem to be uh, trying to stop at least a large stimulus because, one, uh, they want to now begin to try to separate themselves from President Trump because right now all the polls are saying that President Trump is likely to lose. And so uh, previously, while uh, the Senate uh, members were trying to uh, support President Trump, now they're trying to, see, uh, trying to be, uh, seem at least more independent from President Trump in case he loses the election. And then the second calculation behind this is that the Senate Republicans seem to feel that a uh, large stimulus package will help the, uh, help the Democrats more than Republicans. Uh, so uh, because the Senate is saying that they will not pass a large stimulus bill, uh, they will at best uh, introduce, reintroduce the $500 million, uh, billion dollar bill that they uh, had introduced earlier. Uh, right now, the stimulus uh, seems a bit further away from the uh, realization than it, it did uh, yesterday. Uh, the European market seems to be picked uh, since they've gotten that news, uh, its uh, performance has been mixed, let's say, and uh, Euro 50 has gone down, uh, CAC has gone down, but DAX has gone up. Asian markets, uh, Shanghai, it's also mixed. Shanghai has gone down by 0.092%. Hang Seng, Hong Kong by, uh, rose by 0.89%. Nikkei uh, rose by 0.31% following the uh, U.S. trend. And Kospi and Kostak, uh, also seem to be following the U.S. trends. Both of them uh, rose today, Kospi by 0.53 percent, Kostak by 0.73 percent. For Kospi, institutions and foreigners bought while in individuals sold. Kostak, individuals and institutions bought, but the foreigners sold their stocks. Right. Well, the deal, uh, the big deal this week is that SK Hynix is buying Intel's NAND memory business now for $9 billion. This will be the biggest acquisition ever by a Korean company. What's going to come out of this deal? Okay, well, uh, both the uh, U.S. press and the uh, Korean press seem to be uh, looking at this deal favorably. Now, in the short term, there are some concerns that SK may have uh, some cash burden, but lo in the long term, uh, most Korean and U.S. analysts believe that it, this uh, deal will be helpful to both companies. From Intel's point of view, uh, they actually lost money on their memory division between 2016 and 2018 before making a slight profit last year. And then uh, they've been have, Intel has been having some manufacturing problems, and they've also been affected by price changes in NAND memory chips. Uh, now, uh, the uh, Intel, because they, they uh, concentrate more on uh, making uh, CPU chips, very expensive value-added chips, uh, it seems that they're going to get rid of the memory division and concentrate on the uh, higher value added CPU chips. Uh, but it is also reported that Intel will be keeping the advanced 3D X point memory technology that they developed with Micron te uh, technology. So uh, they will be keeping some uh, uh, interest in memory, but just not in man memory. Now, with SK purchasing the uh, Intel's man memory division, uh, SK will now become the second largest NAND memory maker. 
SK had wanted more capacity because, well, the uh, NAND memory division is working out to be very profitable for SN, uh, for SK Hynix. Uh, and uh, with this purchase, they will, be, uh, they will rise from the sixth largest NAND memory producer to second largest. They will hold 19% market share. The only perhaps downside for Korea in this is that most of their production fa uh, facility is actually in China. Uh, the, uh, SK had been operating in factories in Wuhan, uh, and the uh, new Intel uh, pur uh, purchase uh, will involve factory in Dahan. Uh, now, the uh, purchase is to be completed by 2025, but it still needs to be approved by competition authorities in U.S. and Korea. Well, we're almost out of time, Professor, but we just heard that exports, Korea's exports uh, so far this month were uh, down by 5.8 percent, but uh, on a daily average basis, they were up. What do you make of these numbers? Okay, that was a bit predictable because we had Chuseok for the first uh, two days of the year, so the working day was down by 1.5 days compared to last October. Uh, but the more sobering uh, aspect of this uh, statistics is that uh, exports to the United States and China seems to be down, and that may signal that the uh, recovery from the coronavirus may not go as well as we had hoped. Also, last month, uh, the automobile exports had uh, scored a big increase, so we were hoping that the automobile uh, exports would recover as well. But sadly, right now, for the first 20 days of the uh, October, the automobile exports fell by 7.6%. Hopefully, they can pick it up toward the uh, end of the uh, October, but still, uh, for the automobile industry, this was a bit of a disappointing figure. All right, we'll have to leave it there for today. Thanks so much, Professor, for sharing your insights. Thank you.